Hi, this is an introductory course on circular motion. What better way to start than to look at the beautiful Earth as it rotates? All of us living on this planet perform circular motion. The right side of the Earth seems to be lighter and that's because the Sun is on the right hand side and the effect of rotation is it gives us day and night. The first thing to look for in any circular motion is the axis which is the axis. So here the dotted white line is the axis and we have to take a radius from that dotted line axis to the periphery. Now the earth being round the radius of the earth taken from the axis to the periphery of the earth will change. It will be largest at the equator and it will be smallest as we go towards the poles. So to make it simple for this course we will take it only at the equator. So we have cut the earth in half and you can see that the radius is r at the equator and the tangential velocity of a particle on the equator or a person standing on the equator is shown as v. So it's a velocity vector. It has got an arrow. It has a magnitude and it has a direction. And v is always perpendicular to r. And that's important to remember that in circular motion, the tangential velocity, of course, is always perpendicular to the radius of action. The same would be true for a particle which is on the radius. need not necessarily be at the periphery. So, we must now dwell a couple of seconds on the difference between angular speed and angular velocity. The Earth is rotating at a constant angular speed. We always get 24 hours a day. We are not getting 22 hours and 28 hours. So the angular speed being constant, the angular velocity is changing every instant because velocity is a vector. It has both magnitude and direction and the direction of the tangential velocity v is changing every instant as you saw. Therefore, the velocity is not constant and hence the acceleration comes into play. Now let's look at the tangential velocity which is easier to understand. V tangential is equal to r omega. Omega itself the angular velocity or angular speed here is equal to how much angle it swept. So the earth sweeps an angle of 360 degrees per day so that's 2 pi radians divided by one day or 24 hours. Angular velocity is normally expressed in radians and not in degrees. In non-uniform circular motion such as a tire of a car it would be accelerating and decelerating so the tangential velocity at the rim of the tire would be changing with time. So in the equation you see a factor dv by dt so v is tangential that shows that the rotating body is accelerating or decelerating. In uniform circular motion, like in the case of the Earth, there is no change in the tangential velocity per time. So dv by dt becomes zero. And thankfully, the Earth is performing uniform circular motion. The acceleration of that person on the equator is then minus r omega squared and we'll look at it in the next slides. The minus shows that it's a centripetal acceleration. All of us are having this radial component of acceleration towards the center of the earth. So that's why you have minus r omega squared. And the difference between centripetal and centrifugal concepts will be shown in a separate course and not here. So let's look at the force now. The force follows the acceleration because force is equal to mass into acceleration. The acceleration being centripetal, the force also is centripetal. So that's how you get the equation for centripetal force as F is equal to minus mv squared by r. This is an extremely important uh, concept to understand. I hope that uh, as an introductory course this was useful to you and further concepts 
will be explained in other courses. Thank you very much and have a good day.